Hello and welcome to the PBD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us in this week's edition of Twinkle Tips Friday and we have a very wonderful twinkle tip that we want to share with you about life. Let's get right to it. That's right, folks. We're here today to talk about life. Life as in the effect in X-Lights. And this is a very, very, very quiet little effect that doesn't have a lot of excitement wrapped around him because it doesn't really do a lot of graphical things, but it does do graphical things. So uh, instead of instead of doing the format that I generally do with all effects, which is usually a long form in our webinars, I decided I'm going to break down the life effect for you guys in a short video and use a Twinkle Tip Friday as a perfect uh, time to do that. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet. So if you like the content we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, share it with other people in the community. Show them that uh, there are people out there that are so happy to help and share the information about x Lights. And let's go ahead and just kind of get into life. I, I don't know the exact um, origin of the life effect. I want to say that the life effect was in the original version of X-Lights that we used 3.0 back in 2011, 12, and 13. Uh, that, but it, as you can see just by looking at it, the life effect doesn't have a whole lot of sliders and options. But I, apparently it was a model that was available and I would say it was probably written in C++ that the developers at the time were able to configure to work inside of X lights. And here's here's what it's here's what it's based on. The life effect simulates the game of life cellular automation model, and one or more uh, colors can be used in the effect. And that's how the developers wrote it in there. But they used something that they were able to find and apply into X lights. Now. If you can't tell, I'm reading off of the screen here. I'll share it with you in a little bit. But if you go to help and you go to user manual, then Xlights will open up a user manual for you. And and I'm, I'm looking at it right here. So this is what I'm reading to you from right now. And a huge thank you to the people who donate their time to adding these things into the Xlights manual. I know not a lot of us are going to sit there and read through all of the manuals that are available uh, and try to understand everything down to the letter. But I thought because the life effect has such an underuse that it might be interesting or helpful to learn just a little bit more about it before I kind of walk through it and share everything else with you. There is a Wikipedia page uh, on this Game of Life cellular autom automation model. And it, it basically it has uh, a couple rules in how uh, the life model plays out. And it, ha it actually has four rules, four rules that it follows. Now, if you can imagine a square grid of nine pixels one two three four five six seven eight nine and you have a pixel on right in the middle so that's what you need to put uh to, to kind of picture in your head as to exactly what's going on with the life effect so what's going to happen is if you have the pixel in the center on rule number one states any live cell or the pixel is turned on with fewer than two live neighbors dies as if by underpopulation. So if you have this in the middle here and you have two other neighbors, then then it's underpopulated and uh, the, the, the model tells the cells to all die. So the second rule works like this, and I'll, I'll read it to you verbatim. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. So basically, if you have one, uh, if you have one cell here and then you have uh, two or three live neighbors, you can move on to the next generation. So that grows. It allows the growth. The third uh, law or rule that they have written down here is any live cell with more than three lives dies as if by p overpopulation. And the fourth rule is any dead cell that has exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. 
So now with a little bit of background information uh, and a little bit more understanding of why uh, the life effect works the way it does, there's rules for it to work, let's go ahead and I placed a life effect here. Now the Wikipedia page says that from the moment that, the, that life commences, whenever you begin the effect basically, uh, that it will continue on and it will play those four rules that we just talked about. It will create a dynamic change or a turn. Each turn is one generation uh, either growing or another generation uh, dying off. So if you think of each time you see the little flickers on the screen as like as if the cells move, it's those nine cells that are around one cell. It's applying those rules to it at all times. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply this and you can see that the board changes consistently as the effect moves. So again, you've got your nine, your square of pixels with nine pixels in it, and it's saying whatever's here, if, if there's two or more or three or more, and then it goes back through all of those rules, and it breaks those rules down, and it applies it every single turn. And as you can see, it doesn't look like it did whenever it started. Some things are st stuck on this screen, like there's four here stuck on the screen. There's other ones that uh, are stuck here on the screen here. And then this one's growing, and then it stops growing. As life continues to move on, some things get stuck where they're at, but other things continue to change just because of what's going on around them. So I think it's really interesting when you take the time to learn a little bit about the effect and why it does what it does, that it might become a little bit more useful. So let's go through uh, some of the the basics of the uh, X lights life effect. Now, typically this is the default effect when you put the X lights effect down. This is what you're going to see. You're going to see the basic cell start, the type, and the speed. And these are our sliders that we get to play with when we're out there trying to doing to do our sequencing. So we have cells to start. Well, now the number of cells by default, I think it was at 50. Let me reset the effect. You can right click and reset any effect. It was at 50 there. And we can play with this. If you want less cells to start, well, you can see that there's only a few areas that, ha that show a little bit of that activity. If we add more in, there's going to be a, lo a lot more going on. But as you can see, that, that overpopulation, uh, life seems to kind of manage it back down. If, it, if, it, if there's too much going on, it kind of says, nope, we need to disperse and we'll, uh, we'll get rid of some of these and kind of get it down in size. So that's the model of cells to start. Those are, that's just the rules being applied to the effect. I don't think that X lights um, is applying the rules whenever it talks about the type of life that is going to be used. There are four different types of life. So this is type zero. If we go to type one, uh, this is type one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna knock this down a little bit so there's not as many. So there's type one, and this is a little bit different. Look, it's it's kind of growing over here and doing its kind of thing down there, but the rest of them are kind of following the same rules. So we'll see if we change to type two, and here is type two life with two beside each other. Now we can tell that uh, things things are still kind of working, but other things are still just not doing anything. They're, they're either reproducing or uh, they're just staying the same. Uh, type number three, We'll go to this one and have a look. Uh, again, we have to apply the rules, and, and I guess we could add a couple more cells to start. Let's go up to 30 there, or 24. Um, it looks like on type 3, we can go back to type 2 here and look at what type 2 does with more cells, but it looks like life will grow a little bit more if you have type 2 in certain areas, and then you have type 3, which is a little bit more more life that will grow. Wow. So you have a lot more growth whenever you go to type three. And now if we go to type four, let's have a look and see what that does. What it almost looks like, if I were to go back and grab, let me grab this screenshot off the screen here. If we go look through these, it, we, we see that there's four types of different um, animation or different types of life. Um, I would venture to say that type zero would be the type where all of these rules are active. I, I'm, and I'm guessing here, I'm just guessing, no, I'm just guessing, I'm guessing that whenever you change this to type one, that it 
it eliminates the rules of type one and it follows what life would do had that rule not been in effect uh, then with number three obviously the same thing I think that, that I think that that's what's going on but now we're in rule number four any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by uh, reproduction now I'll get that out of here and it looks like to me that it's e it's either it's either amplifying the rule or it's um, it's taking away the rule and to me it looks like this one's adding in the rule drastically uh, so um, I think that's very interesting, uh, the, the types, the different types. There's four different models, but there's actually five different settings for you to kind of set it to. So uh, the last thing we'll talk about is speed. And speed is just basically the number of turns that every time you see a change on the screen here, that's all we're looking at. So if we speed this up or we slow this down, so that's just something for you guys to play with the, the, the speed. You've got the type and you've got the cells to start. Let's get into a couple of things that deal with color. So the first thing we'll do is we will uh, go ahead and grab one of these effects. We will go ahead and reset it. Let's right click, reset effect. And if we go ahead and select two colors, you can see here that what x -Lights is doing is it's blending the colors based on their location to the neighbor. So if we kind of cut this down, let's give it type two scroll down here a little bit on the cells and you can see like red doesn't grow and green doesn't grow but the the yellow or the the brownish the the off yellow does seem to grow so that's kind of interesting you don't have more more red or more green you have more of the yellow which is the babies i guess you could say that's a way for x lights to kind of uh, designate which one's the babies now don't forget that we can also mess around with some color curves and as you can see here I've got a color curve here and and the color curve acts really uh, interesting whenever it comes to how the effect plays out I'll go ahead and extend this out a little bit here let's move this over a bit we'll just go a little further there and as you can see whenever the effect starts you have a, a lot of major patches that show a lot of the growth and some of the other colors that you can see here, the original color, like whenever it started, so this is a, a regular blue, then a white, and then a lighter blue. And the way the life model builds the effect is it's taking and it's giving the, the, the color curve, the curved color, to the newborn life. In other words, the older ones get to hold on to their color and the younger ones get to take on uh, the new color as it curves. So that's a rather interesting thing. I really uh, never messed around with the color curve and adding it into the, um, the, the life effect to see kind of what it does. So the last thing we want to go over is how do you apply this in your sequencing? So I, what I would say is that you need to spend some time. You need to spend time practicing and using the effects and not only that but layer blending and layer settings and being able to change things around and make them be uh, interesting in different ways. Now uh, I've, I've built a couple of these uh, simulations here, Some uh, just one of the basic things. One basic thing you can do with the life effect is you can come down here and use the blur and whenever you use blur it turns it into something a little bit different if it's too dim for you you can always go up to your color palette here and go ahead and scroll down and go to your brightness and you can kick the brightness up so you see a little bit more brightness and it has a little bit more uh, uh, detail to it but blur does what it's supposed to it blurs things out and part of blur actually dims it down too so it's just keep that in mind that's that's just another tool for your tool belt uh, I did come up with a couple scenarios here I'll, I'll try to explain them all pretty pretty simply as we go. Uh, this is the butterfly effect and then over top of it I have a, a random set of cell uh, of, of settings on, on there and I gave the butterfly effect underneath of it a one is true unmask. So basically you can see the butterfly effect here getting applied over top of just the cells that are painted with the pixels from the life effect that are active. And the next one would be a pinwheel effect and pinwheel is on top and you have down below it you have the life effect so 
this version here we're using two is true on mask under your layer blendings you're welcome to play with all of these so here's a way to look make to make any effect that looks like solid and perfect a little bit more broken up a little bit less uh, symmetrically perfect if you're trying to get a pebbled look or or something like this this is a way to do it so here you've got that one two is true on mask and you have the uh, life effect underneath of it another version of the effect right up here we'll go ahead and click on it you have uh, this is your basic spirals your your opposite diamond spirals you take one you set it up the way you like it I put three colors on it and then I copy and paste it and flipped it horizontally using the uh, using the the uh, layer setting box here I flipped it horizontally so I got my diamonds and then I put over top of it I made that uh, brightness uh, and and there's a bunch of different layer blendings you're gonna have to if you hover over it there you see the list there you, you, you really have to play with it like figuring things out next slice is great when you know how to do things but the thing is is that whenever you're dealing with layer blending you'll have to play with it you have to manipulate it there are there are what 20 15 10 20 different layer blendings like there's a bunch of them and you're not going to know what they do until you go out and you start playing with them yourself uh, the last one here this is the plasma effect and then also we have the life effect and then also we have a single strand effect now if I if, if if I look at the layer blendings that I gave it, uh, the single strand has three chases, and you can see them very clearly. They're these bars that are going across the screen from the uh, from the from the uh, left to the right, uh, or the left to the right. I'm I'm reversed. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see that it does something interesting it looks like the like the life is traveling across the screen but meanwhile we also use the plasma over top of it and we gave it two is unmasked and so now it's unmasking the colors of the plasma applying it to the life effect but also being carried across the screen by the single strand effect <laughs> And there you have it, the life effect, the X-Lights life effect, and its entirety. It is not the most exciting effect ever, but it does have potential. It does have something that you can add to create different looks to your effects using the layer blending and mashing it with other things inside of X-Lights. We, 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 we just kind of scratched the surface on what it could look like or what you could do with it but the the truth is is that you'll never know what you can do with the life effect until you actually apply it to what you're sequencing so that's the trick guys that's the thing that you have to do anytime you want to learn how to sequence I highly recommend doing this sit down use every slider make a make a, a, a blank sequence and just play with the effects and figure out exactly what they do so that's everything from me this week guys from pixel pro displays if you like the video please give us a huge thumbs up if you haven't done yet so hit the big subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications and if you like cool shirts just like our ppd t-shirt lineup head over to pixelprodisplays.com click on our store and go to our gear section and you'll be able to order those as well and if you appreciate the things that we do here at pixel pro displays consider becoming a ppd sequence club member today it is the best way to support us and what we do here with and for the community to help you guys get to grips and understand and learn more about the RGB NX Lights lighting hobby. Guys, thank you for joining me again. This is Clyde signing out. It's been wonderful seeing you again. We hope you have a fantastic weekend, and we will see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.